Josh Brown, Nakahoma Nation. I'm Marky e. Bilson. You're listening to 1420 WEMB Sports Radio. The Atlanta Braves have made a transaction. Let's uh, give it to you here. Uh, Jeremy Walker was optioned to Gwinnett, and Patrick Weigel was recalled to Atlanta. Now, I don't believe not. What, Walker, Braves lost last night to the Marlins 9 2. Proving the old adage that unless you're the Detroit Tigers, I suppose, you're going to win a third of your games, you're going to lose a third of the games, and then what you do in between is where you finish and such. The Tigers will probably lose more than a third of their games this year, I mentioned that. And again, uh, my investment uh, advice to you is if you want to buy a house, bet against the Tigers. But, uh, well, should we be betting on Patrick Weigel? It's a guy with a ERA of less than three in the minor leagues. I think he's going to be, uh, we were talking about the bullpen, uh, possible woes for the Braves, although you, like, okay, first act wasn't so good, but let's not uh, write him off just yet. But uh, what about this? Uh, is it to prepare for the series because you're sending down a guy who threw three and a third of long relief, Jeremy Walker, yesterday in a 9-2 loss? Or what's your, what's your take on this? Well, I've been high on Patrick Weigel since 2016. I got to watch him in that historic 2016 Grown Braves rotation with him and Tukey and Coley Aller and uh, Soroka. Uh, and uh, listen, he's 6'6 and throws 100 miles an hour. That, that's what fans need to know about Patrick Weigel. He's a, he's a total savage. Uh, his numbers in the minors don't really give you a full picture of what he does just because he had Tommy Johnny was out for a whole year. And so really the last full season you can kind of look at is his 2016 low A season with Rome and then some spotty stuff here and there uh, after that. But, uh, you know, if you talk to scouts, if you talk to player development, they're, they're like, I mean, long story short, he's a beast and he throws really, really hard and he throws strikes. He had a little bit of a walk issue in Gwinnett this year that might be a little concerning perhaps, but uh, – you know, he's 25 right now. It's kind of make or break time for your career, right? So he comes up, he either does well. If he doesn't, then you're kind of at that age where, uh, you know, uh, it sounds uh, gloomy, but you kind of prove yourself or you don't, right? So uh, I think that the Braves are uh, much more higher on him than Jeremy Walker, which is, you know, part of the reason why Walker probably got sent down. But, um, you know, Weigel – seventh round draft pick in 2015 out of the uh, University of Houston. And, I mean, the guy throws hard. He was clocking 101 in mm. play in, like, July. Uh, and, 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 the, and this July. This July, because, I mean, no, no, no. oh. No, uh, my apologies. When I was covering him in Rome, okay. uh in 2016, he was, he was swinging triple digits, you know, in the heat of the summer. And we were all just talking about this guy as, as being – I mean, you don't want to compare to Noah Syndergaard, you know, but that kind of profile, like big, strong, throws heat uh, kind of guy. So they groomed him initially to be a starter. He was a starter yeah. all through Rome, and, and we thought he was going to be a starter, right? Then he had Tommy John surgery, and I think that the Braves kind of have a really cool problem in that they have just tons of pitching. You know, they kind of built this thing around pitching, and they got a little bit of flat for that, which was kind of silly, but... Uh, there's so much pitching that guys like Weigel, guys like Tukey, uh, even guys like maybe Kyle Wright might end up being, you know, some type of bullpen piece. And that's no slight of them. It's just the system they're in right now. There's just so much pitching. Uh, so, yeah, I think fans should definitely be excited about Patrick Weigel. Yeah, I, you mentioned the Tommy John. Have you heard about his velocity recently? Because when I hear Tommy John surgery, I think of Tommy John and just what a sinker ball pitcher he was at the end of his career after his own Tommy John surgery. It seems like, I, I don't know, has he been able to maintain the velocity after such surgery? I haven't heard anything one way or the other. So I, I, I'm just guessing that it's about the same. Sometimes when guys come back from Tommy John, especially their first one, they'll throw that sounds crazy, but I mean, that actually is pretty common for guys to come back and, you know, actually throw a little bit harder. I don't, I don't know if you can throw harder than what he was already throwing, you know, but yeah. I haven't heard anything good or bad. And usually if you hear stuff, uh, you hear it pretty quickly. Uh, but no, I think uh, I, from what I've heard, what I gather, I think he's still another thing. 
So we'll take a look at what his velocity is here uh, when he makes his debut, probably in the Miami series and all this. By the way, what was your take on the Twin series? I was talking to you this off the air. My take was two out of three, and I know a lot of people were upset with uh, how the bullpen, and we've, you know, covered that, and here's the, you know, transaction being made, that sort of thing. But, yeah. I, you know, I liked it because look at all the bombs Freddie Freeman hit. Uh, I liked it because here are the Twins, by the way, only a game ahead of the Indians right now in the standings, uh, but anyway, here are the Twins uh, about on the track to hit 300-odd home runs, shatter the Major League record most home runs in a season, yet it was the Braves beating them at their own game, and... Yeah, potentially, I guess this could be a preview of the World Series. I don't know if I would bet on Braves and Twins right now, but uh, it's a theoretically could happen or so. What was your take on the Twin Series, Josh Brown of Nakahoma Nation? Well, I think it's important to understand that the Twins are really good. I mean, they're fantastic. They're, they're seventy games uh, one this year. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. They're a first place team, and so it's not like the Braves played the Twins of old or some, you know, Bush League team like the Royals, right? I mean, they played a formidable team at their home turf. And, uh, and yeah, to your point, Marquis, they, they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the long ball, which I think is crucial, especially if the Braves end up playing the Dodgers like we think would probably mm -hmm. happen, right? Uh, the Dodgers are just going to hit a bunch of homers, and uh, the Braves have to play that brand of baseball right now to, to go all the way. I thought it was a great series, and I thought that, again, you know, it wasn't like you're watching these guys like Freed uh, dealing against the Twins of old or some, you know, okay team. But he was putting away a first-place incredible team who has legit deep postseason uh, possibilities, you know. So it was a great series for Grace. You know, you can say it's only three games, but uh, I took at it as, okay, this does prove that the Braves, in my opinion, one of the four elite teams of baseball this year, along with the Dodgers, the Astros, and the Yankees. Uh, that That's my take on this. Uh, the Cubs really seem to be banged up right now. Uh, you know, there may be some good teams uh, out there. I mean, the Indians are so hot, but uh, other, you know, I don't see the Cleveland Indians going, maybe they make the playoffs, but winning the World Series, that sort of thing. If you ask me who can do it, although I still, th I wouldn't bet on the Braves, I think that they're in that mix of teams to talk about, that sort of thing. And I think that they officially did move themselves ahead of the Twins with this three-game series. Uh, that doesn't mean the Twins can't win the World Series, obviously, but, you know, it's, no one would say that. But it was a, st a good step, and beating the Twins at their own game, like we, we both have said here. Uh, I guess we, uh, Minnesota is a lot closer to Iowa than either Georgia, North Carolina, or Tennessee, the South right there. I, I do have to ask you, next year they're going to build an 8,000-seat stadium for one game between the Yankees and the White Sox. What are your thoughts on the Field of Dreams game, Josh Brown of Nakahoma Nation? I, I'm going to sound like an old man yelling at the clouds, because I, I saw it, and my initial reaction was, that is so cool, right? Yeah. And then you click on the article, and you see a rendering of the field they're building next to the Field of Dreams. And, you know, it's just, I mean, it's not, they're not really playing in the Field of Dreams. They're not, there's no cornfields involved. They're probably going to... There's going to be a view of corn, but so what? I mean, you know, Memorial Stadium, Baltimore had a view of tomatoes that Earl Weaver right. planted. Go ahead, yes. Joe Jackson's probably rolling in his grave. You know, first Rob Manfred, you know, slights him and doesn't reinstate him, which is so dumb. I mean... How, how dumb can you be to not reinstate Shields Joe Jackson when you look at what he did in the, in the World Series? What, he had like three... He had 375, but the thing is right. is that the reports are that he dogged plays in the field. There, okay. there's uh, the, the idea, was especially, I mean, around that time, it was like, wait a minute here, that's not the way you play that ball... And, I mean, we know that Eddie Sakati hit the batter to begin with to show that, you know, the fix was in. We know that and all this. And, you know, he didn't get any money. But there's some idea that there's some of those plays that weren't there. But then again, 356 lifetime. And I do know a hero of the South, and especially to South Carolinians. But, yes, go ahead, Josh Brown. Yeah, yeah. And it would be interesting to see if they, 
Did the MLB black out that game in Iowa? Because I went like, <laughs> and like every game, like Kansas City, you can't watch Kansas City games because Iowa's near Kansas City. You can't watch Chicago games. You can't watch Minnesota games. Like Iowa, poor Iowans who just want to watch some baseball, but MLB's just ridiculous blackout rules, uh, for, you know, prevent them from watching their grand old game, you know, after work. Uh, on the couch. So sad. So sad to be an island these days. I just talked to Tony Page of WFAN about boxing. And I mean, once upon a time in this country, let's say before World War II or so, a heavyweight title fight. Uh, Ma Max Bear against Joe Lewis. Something like that. That was as big as what the Super Bowl would be today. I mean, you look at the media coverage they got if you go into the microfilm and all that, there's no question. And I, I remember even asking my grandfather, he said, yeah, I'd make that comparison. I, I think that's a good analogy. Uh, and so, But what happened to boxing? And he even said this, you know, so much of it got pay-per-view. The only way that boxing would ever come back is if it gets shown a lot on free TV. I mean, if we have Friday night fights in place of Monday night baseball, you know, or Monday night football, as the case may be, that sort of thing. And and I, I've said that a million times. When you are now making it so difficult, when we here at 1420 WEMB Sports Radio, uh, you know, we've got to pay uh, a, a, an amount of money to carry the games. When uh, And, and I kind of understand that, okay, but when that's the case, when you to listen online have to pay... Uh, just to hear it online, it wasn't always this way. When it's a hundred dollars to go, you get all the games unless it's your home team. You know, after a while, it's like, how do I watch baseball? I'm not right. sure. Right. And that, that, yeah, I know. And, 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 and another reason why baseball is, I think, suffering just a little bit. I mean, it's, it's doing pretty good, but it's suffering a little bit is because of that. What you just said, but also like, you know. 30 years ago, there was no Netflix. There was no summertime yeah. series. There's no binge-watching stuff, right? Streaming stuff. But now, baseball, a Tuesday night baseball game competes with, you know, you want to stream uh, House of Cards or, yeah. uh, or whatever. Last Chance You on Netflix. Right? Watch Rowdy Roddy Piper videos on YouTube. I've done that, YouTube. yes. Anyway, but yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how I've been spending my time. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, my buddy uh, Phil Dream from WCR here in Newland is uh, chastising me for throwing shade at the Phil Dreams game because he's a he wants to go real bad. Then I will sh throw shade at this. Uh, first of all, I, I got to figure they're taking a home game away from the White Sox, not the Yankees. First of all, that's right there when you look at the ticket prices that both of them are going to be uh, having. And okay, yeah, build the brand of the White Sox in Iowa. Okay, I get it. Fine. Yeah, I mean, right. that's, that's fine. But uh, the other thing is that you're latching on to this. I think of the baseball movies of the era, and I think you're making a cultural statement here. Yes, I do. Field of Dreams was a movie in which they are championing the 60s. I mean, what? Uh, Kevin Costner's wife is uh, comparing the people in the assembly hall to Ava Braun for crying out loud. Uh, Costner's character is talking about smoking grass, all of this sort of stuff. Yes, Burt Lancaster's character, Moonlight Graham, very charming, but my goodness, but they even dismiss him and say every town has a Moonlight Graham. What makes this so special and all this? Meanwhile, same era of movie, Major League, what does Manfred do to poor old Chief Wahoo? Yes, I'm going to say it. I think you're making a cultural statement here, and you are, just like pro basketball does, trying to disassociate yourself from the fan of the heartland, which is what has made baseball the sport it is today. You are actually, by having the Field of Dreams game, taking the game away from the Field of Dreams. Marky Bilson's opinion, spree Shit. What do you think, Josh Brown? Hello, Marty. That's my that's my point Rob right Man. there. Anyway, I, the the cultures that Rob Manfred wants to put into this sport is ridiculous. But luckily, the Atlanta Braves are still America's team, or at least they used to be called that. And hey, they're in first place, so uh, maybe that has some heartland appeal. Tri City Sports now. Uh, I shouldn't have.